Jome be Colombe. Je m'appelle Mina, and it's time for our annual Emily in Paris fashion review. Season 2 was just released over the holiday break, the perfect time for us all to binge this Walmart version Sex in the City. If you've been following me for a while, you'll probably remember the first installment to this program, Emily in Paris is a Fashion Disaster, in which I gave a pretty scathing critique of everything that this show represents. So now, I'm about to say something that may shock and disturb you all. I actually liked season two better than season one. Like, let's not get it twisted. I still didn't like season two. But I feel like the writers actually listened to what people said about the show and made a couple improvements. For instance, we see Emily actually going to French school more than one time this season, and she actually is held back because her French is still so bad. I've never been held back for, for anything. There's the first time for everything. I also really laughed at this bit when she tries to write a letter to Camille and they edit it like the sequence of the French film Jules et Jim. I also thought they were way less annoying about all the French stereotypes. Like, there were still sequences where they reference how French people sleep around and all these, like, menage a trois. I just don't want you to do anything you're going to regret. Oh, Emily, my sweet concerned American. But we also see how, in reality, that's not always the case as well. I mean, like you said, it's, it's just sex, right? Yeah, I know I've said that, but uh, I didn't. I did like the scenes of the French characters speaking French to each other. As I should, it felt a lot more natural and organic. Emily also wears a lot less monogrammed Chanel stuff this season. Her clothes are still expensive, but I feel like it's less in your face. They also didn't play up the influencer bit as much as they did last season, which I liked because her numbers never really made sense to me. And so it was a welcome change for that all to just revert to like background noise rather than be a major plot point. I also think I just liked the show more this go around because when I went into season one, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what kind of show it was. And so I was blown away by how bad it was. <laughs> but going into season two, I knew now what to expect. And so I was pleasantly surprised. I think it's pretty clear that Emily and Paris is just taking the piss at this point. Like they're trolling us. They know that the secret formula to getting more views and getting more popularity is to be as messy and chaotic as possible. And it's clearly working because here I am making another video on it. I also came across this WWD article on how Viacom CBS Consumer Products, the parent company to MTV Entertainment Studios, which produces Emily in Paris, is actually selling some clothes featured on the show. According to co-costume designer Marilyn Fatusi, the merchandising aspect on the show was separate from the costume design team's decision making. But I do feel like there's something fishy about Emily's obsession with motor gloves this season and Patricia Field's Emily in Paris glove collection available to buy on her website as well as some other pieces featured on the show. Capitalism conspiracy aside, I know some of you are probably like, Mina, why are you discussing something that is clearly trash TV? And to that I say, because it's my job, because it's fun, and because a bunch of you already asked me to cover this show again. So here we are. I also thought it'd be like fun to kind of talk about what I would do if I was the costume designer for the show. So yes, once again, this is my informal audition to Netflix for a job. So let's get into it. But first, I want to discuss the major problems with the show's writing this season. They may have taken out all the racist Asian jokes, but they added this weird part where Emily befriends a Ukrainian woman who exists only to be a one-dimensional, stereotypical lawbreaker. Wait, we didn't pay! Gabrielle still exists as a potential love interest, enough said. Mindy's storyline was a sleeper. I had zero interest in her busking love melodrama with the extremely boring Benoit, but even less interest in her singing in every episode. There's no question that Ashley Park can outsing all of us, but rather than sprinkling in her performances like a little treat in season one, we're overloaded with it, and the singing starts to come across as just filler because they didn't feel like writing. Camille also turns into a bit of a villain, but we'll talk about her a little later. As for the bad fashion, aka the stuff I know you're all dying to hear, I don't want to repeat myself too much from my last video. So in sum, these are like the major problems I had for the first season. Emily's style is not representative of her character. It's super unrealistic for her to be able to afford all her designer clothes. And nothing she wears remotely resembles what's in style today, which makes no sense because she's supposed to be this influencer. So as I said, they downplayed the influencer bit this season. So I'm just going to ignore problem three 
but let's see if they addressed any of the other issues. In an interview with Elle, Fatusi said, I learned a beautiful thing from Patricia Field. Every morning she said, Marilyn, don't care about reality. When I started to design season one, I was thinking too much about, for example, Mindy. Oh, she's a nanny, so she needs to run after the kids in a park, so she needs to have sneakers. When I designed Mindy with sneakers, I saw Patricia looking at showrunner Darren Starr and Darren looking at Patricia saying, what is going on? Sneakers? It's something that can't happen in Darren's world. They said, Marilyn, we don't care about reality. So now I completely understand their world. This is where I disagree with pretty much everyone in production. I think you can offer escapism without veering too far away from reality because I think when you take too many creative liberties, it becomes distracting. For instance, in season one, I was too distracted by Emily walking in Louboutins down cobbled streets to really pay attention to what was going on plot wise. The joy of costume design is knowing when to take creative liberties and when to keep it a little real. And honestly, I thought Patricia and Darren did a better job balancing these two things in Sex and the City. For example, the creative liberties involved Carrie's spending budget, but the realist aspect was her not having any savings. It says here that you have 700 in your checking account and 957 in savings and being well known enough across New York that we can assume she's paid above average for her column. Joseph has this crazy beautiful rent controlled apartment and to balance that fantasy, there's an episode where she goes apartment searching and can't find any good deals, which brings us back to the reality that New York apartments are shit and Carrie found the only gem in Manhattan. <laughs> How can this apartment be $2,800 a month? I pay $750 for something that's twice the size and it don't smell like takeout. Back to Emily, Fatusi said Emily's style was intentionally cliched, but it was also cheerful and whimsical and allowed her to fully express her enthusiasm for being there. As a disclaimer, I don't care if a character is badly dressed, but I feel like the way they dress has to reflect their personality. And Emily is not really fun or whimsical. There's even like this running joke in the show about how not fun she is. Don't do anything. It's illegal to work on weekend in France. Okay, well, now you're just being dramatic. So I thought that we could get dinner and then go there after for a little promo. Oh, sweet. But we not here to work. Emily, I'm travaille. Emily Nempa Sam Uze. We definitely don't see her micromanaging as much as in season one, but she's still a go-getter, incredibly organized, and motivated to succeed in her career. She hasn't really relaxed this season. While you were out brunching, Emily here just locked down a new client. Great. I was with Pierre Cadeau. If I was costuming the series for season one, I would probably have her dress more like Midwest corporate, like a lot of Zara and Banana Republic. And before anyone says, you know, that's not chic, like blah, 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 you're not making any statements with that. Um, I think it's still possible to look nice in pencil skirts and blazers. Take Miranda from Sex and the City, for instance, who has a very corporate style. Even though she's not as adventurous as Carrie Bradshaw, she still looks nice. Plus, Emily is still young. She's still climbing her way up in the industry. She's still trying to get a promotion. So I would assume that she would try to dress a little bit more professional in the workplace and not in these like highlighter yellow motor gloves. According to Fatusi, the reason for dressing Emily like this is because they needed to keep her like a fish out of water. I know people in France are really, really afraid and scared about colors, about print. In my opinion, they're just trying to make Emily into like this next Carrie Bradshaw who dresses very over the top, but Emily and Carrie are very different. Probably the only things that they have in common are their bad choices in men. Justice for Eden, you were the perfect man. In career and personality, Emily is way more self-assured than Carrie. She's way less chaotic, less witty, more organized, and she doesn't talk about shoes or shopping half as much as Carrie does. And most importantly, Carrie is a New York girl. I feel like if they wanted Emily to dress more out there, they should have had her start off in New York, not in Chicago. No offense to all my Midwest girlies. I know some of you probably have really good style, but... uh. <laughs> If Emily was one of those girls with good style in the Midwest, then surely, surely she would be talking about fashion more often than she does. I complained about this in my season one review, how Emily is very ignorant of the fashion world, not knowing who Pierre Cadeau is, who's supposed to be like freaking Karl Lagerfeld. She doesn't talk about shopping or style. She doesn't seem to really care about clothes, yet she owns a ton of designer clothes. 
This season, they did try to throw in one major chopping trip for her, which was greatly appreciated, but the execution actually made her situation even more confusing. Uh, c'est baguette très jolie, mais argent gras. Um, <laughs> like she balks at the price tag of a baguette bag, which yes, I get it, Sex in the City reference. Give me a bag. What? Your bag. It's a baguette. But last season, we saw her carrying Chanel's shopping bags. Like, I'm sorry? Emily, are you making less money now or something? This season, they definitely had her wear less Chanel, less Louboutins, less monograms in general, but she's still wearing pretty expensive clothes. So we're still left wondering how she can afford anything. And not only that, but now my boyfriend's theory that she just shoplifts her entire wardrobe is debunked as well. Don't you know what happened to Jean Valjean when you stole the baguette? Have you ever seen Les Mis? This season, she also wears a lot more old Hollywood-inspired looks, like this ensemble consisting of a vintage Courage dress, a headscarf, and large sunglasses that give off an Audrey Hepburn vibe. This is a continuation from an idea they played with in season one with her funny face tribute at the opera. I actually like the old Hollywood route because I feel like it's something different, like it's something that not a lot of contemporary costume designers do. But again, it would make a little bit more sense if they showed Emily having a little teeny bit of interest in old films. Like, come on, how easy would it have been to just put like a basic breakfast at Tiffany's poster in her apartment somewhere? The issue is that the costume designers want Emily to look eccentric and unique, but the script doesn't really allow for that. Sure, a few characters poke fun at Emily's wardrobe. Emily and Port, they're very more amusant but she never like returns their jokes with any kind of justification for why she dresses like this. So imagining myself as the costume designer for season two, as Emily gets a little bit more footing in Paris, I would probably have her start dressing a little bit more like Sylvie and Camille who have more classic French minimal looks. I wouldn't have Emily look exactly like them. I'd probably incorporate more colors and more patterns to have her stand out a little bit more as the main character and also to show that she's still experimenting with fashion. I don't think Emily should be amazingly well-dressed. Like there would clearly be some off looks, but it would get better over time. Paris is the fashion capital of the world, or at least historically. So what better way to show this transition from her Chicago life to her Paris life than to show it visibly through the way her fashion changes. Emily's also clearly taking French more seriously this season, considering we actually see her in language classes. And at the end of the season, she has to make this decision between staying in France indefinitely or going back home to Chicago. Obviously, the show is not called Emily in Chicago for a reason, so she's going to be staying in France one way or another. And having her dress more Parisian throughout the season would better hint at this decision. So she decides to take Sylvie's offer, which I'm assuming she will. It will feel more organic and authentic because the way that she dresses reflects the growth and the life that she is building in Paris. This season, we also meet Madeline, Emily's boss, who is very much like season one Emily, though way scarier and way more severe. Emily also implies that she was heavily influenced by Madeline. I don't need willful execs with 10 years of bad habits they need to unlearn. I need little mounds of clay that I can mold into the exact team that I want. Like, uh, like me? Look, I know what I should do. Just so if Emily's the type of person to pattern her work skills after the woman she's working for, then wouldn't it make sense for her to take some influence from Sylvie? I think she does a bit. Last night? Many hours have passed since last night without a word from you. You told me to stop texting you on weekends. But the best way to drive home that message is to show that transformation through her clothes. So long story short, I would want Emily's wardrobe to reflect her becoming more embedded in Parisian culture. Fitoussi said that she wanted Emily's style to contrast with Camille's as well. Camille's season one outfit are undeniably French, romantic, and youthful, whereas Emily's style is avant-garde and very strong. I don't really understand why they wanted to make such a difference between Camille and Emily this season because to be honest, it makes more sense for Emily to dress like Camille, not just because she's becoming more Parisian, but because she's coming after Camille's life, what with trying to steal her boyfriend and everything. Jokes aside, portraying them as these complete opposites feels as though the writers are pushing this rivalry of Emily versus Camille, and I'm not about it. Love triangles are outdated, they're a tired concept. We've seen it a million times before, and you would think that in this day and age, a show that has a mainly female demographic would try to push for more female friendships rather than have women duking it out over a scrub. Like, that doesn't give me serotonin. 
Also, did anyone else feel like they tried to set up Camille as the villain this season? Like, they clearly wanted us to sympathize with Emily, who was feeling guilty, but honestly, not guilty enough. And to see Camille as this manipulative bitch. In the show, after giving Emily the silent treatment, Camille becomes the bigger person and makes this pact with Emily that neither of them should date Gabrielle. However, right when Emily is about to break the pact herself, que horror, Camille already has. I can totally tell it's meant to be like a shocking moment, but meanwhile, I'm thinking, Camille has been with this man for five years and he cheated on her after five long years of devoting her life to this relationship. So are we supposed to really be mad at her for getting back together with him? The real villain is Gabrielle, who is clearly still in love with Emily, but chooses to rather waste more of Camille's time and toy with her feelings just because he needs some kind of woman to emotionally support him because he's a really big baby who cannot make any adult decisions. <laughs> You see that everyone? I was so passionate about this that my scarf flew off my head. So anyways, uh, the costume designers tried to evoke this change in Camille through her clothes, but I wasn't really a fan of how they went about this. Compared to season one, Camille is dressed way less girly, less romantic. It makes a little sense since her spirits are crushed with the cheating scandal being revealed and she's not as hopelessly naive as she used to be. Or, you know, I feel like she is still naive because she still got back with Gabrielle unless her plan is to literally like destroy his life and career in which I hope that's the case. Don't let me down, Camille. Fitusi said she was very nice and genuine at the beginning and someone just shit on her. She experienced betrayal. That's why I wanted to introduce her in season two in a massive oversized ball man jacket to put her more to power. So Camille is supposed to dress in these oversized blazers to evoke a sense of power, but really in execution, it's giving mess. It's giving, I don't know how to dress myself anymore. The boxy jackets swallow her and rather than looking chic, she looks like a kid in her mother's clothes or father's clothes, honestly, with the way they're fitting. The irony is that Emily actually does a better oversized suit look after a night with Alfie because he ripped her blouse. Another difference between Carrie and Emily or really any fashion lover and Emily is that Emily allows Alfie to destroy her blouse. Let's just rip it. <laughs> No one who loves their clothes would just allow someone to rip up their blouse. Anyways, if I was costuming the show, I'd probably have Camille start off wearing lighter, airier fabrics, similar to what she was wearing um, in season one. And then after the whole scandal is revealed, I would have her transition to grayer, more solid, um, darker colors to show how she's like grieving about this betrayal. And then to strong jewel tones, more revealing cutouts and uh, stronger silhouettes to show how she's trying to get back Gabrielle. So I guess I can say I like the concept behind Camille's wardrobe. I just didn't like the execution of it. I didn't like the specific clothing choices they made for her, but I liked, for instance, this revealing dress number. And I liked the idea of her wearing blazers. Okay, on to Mindy. I honestly don't even know what to say because she confused me this season. There's a lot of fedoras. Uh, there was a lot of... 2010 fashion vlogger vibes. So I understand none of that, but mostly I don't understand how Benoit was bamboozled into thinking she was a starving artist when she wears designer clothes and never outfit repeats. And now Benoit just thinks I was playing him. He has no one to blame but himself for being misled. <laughs> About Mindy, Patricia Field said, there's a certain sexiness that's very compatible with this actress, and I try to always infuse a bit of that in her costumes without going overboard. Mindy also claims that she like wants to start over her life in Paris. She wants to leave her Chinese heiress past behind. Um, she wants to start a life with Benoit in this bohemian fantasy that he's projecting onto her. So you would think that in all this, she would try to dress more simply, more casually. I wanted to see like Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie, simple life, except Mindy. <laughs> like I wanted to see, what's like another one? Was it Cowbells, that movie with uh, Ali and AJ where they have to go work on a farm or something? Like, you know, like I wanted to see this clear, not descent, but this 
clear prioritization of starting a new life without all the luxury and excess associated with her previous life. And that does include the clothes. Fatusi also described Mindy being like a superhero. She's going to fight and win a battle, singing in the street in front of many people, and fight with the mime. She's this superwoman a little bit. I think Mindy actually goes through a lot this season, even if it bored me. Like, she's working as a bathroom attendant for tips because she can't get a work visa. She's busking on the streets because she can't get a gig anywhere. And then the Benoit drama and also her father cutting her off and ignoring her texts. It's rough, and I don't know if dressing her like a superwoman really corresponds with her character arc this season. Finally, I want to talk about the season finale's runway show. And I don't know if they're planning to do a runway show for every season finale because they did that also with season one. But uh, this season finale was considerably worse, I think. The scene was just so weird. Like, first of all, the designer, Gregory Elliott Dupree, is the best dressed in the whole fashion show and he's not even modeling. The fashion show also takes references from Sofia Coppola's macaroon-colored Marie Antoinette film rather than a real fashion show. Like the Victor and Rolf one they copied last season, which, you know, even though the dresses were way tackier than what was in the actual collection, you could see the real world reference and therefore kind of believe that this could happen. I don't know what was going on here. Like, I felt like it was just very unrealistic. I haven't been to that many fashion shows, like, in person, but I haven't been to anything like this. And especially because Gregory is supposed to be this, like, high fashion designer um, that rivals Pierre Cadeau. That's like saying, I, I don't know, like, I can't think of, like, a fashion rivalry, but... You know, we're talking about big houses here, like Louis Vuitton and Celine and Prada. Why the models are just wearing colorful shapewear and crinolines that look cheaply made, you tell me. (laughs) And they look pretty much dressed all the same, which, again, very confusing because Gregory is supposed to be this amazing fashion designer, yet all of his models are wearing like the same clothes. Okay, everyone, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought about Emily in Paris season two, if you thought the season was better than last season, if you thought they were like the same, or if you thought the season was worse, I'd love to hear it. And yeah, I don't know if I'll continue talking about Emily in Paris from this day forth because I feel like it's a win for them that they actually got two videos out of me already but this was fun and I enjoyed making this video and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day bye